Hey everyone, it's me again, Ian, with more Audi TT fixes, mods, and upgrades. In this video, we'll be looking at checking your VR6 timing chain stretch values using VCDS, which is the typical tool you'll use, and also through Color MFA. Now, this video is going to be handy for you if you've got a Mark IV R32 or TT 3.2 VR6. It will also be handy if you've got a TT Mark II 3.2 or Golf Mark V R32. Towards the end of the video, I'll be checking timing stretch on an R36 3.6. So this video will also be helpful if you've got a 3.6 litre Passat uh, B6, uh, Skoda Superb, Audi Q7, and what else has a 3.6 in it? Porsche KN. Now, I'm doing this video because I think it's about time I check the status of my 3.6 engine swapped Mark II TT. If you want to know more about that project, click on the pop-up in the top right-hand corner of the screen. Before you check for timing chain stretch, you want to ensure that the engine is up to temperature and you run the test while the engine's idling. So now that's done, you can fire up VCDS and enter module one engine. This is on a 3.2 Mark IV VR6. Next, you wanna choose measuring blocks 08 and in the groups, you can enter 208, press go, and then in the next row down, enter 209 and press go. The values you wanna pay attention to are in field three, idle stabilization. Now you want these to be as close to zero degrees as possible. If the numbers aren't zero, you'll wanna take note of them and calculate the spread between the two values from 208 and 209. For example, in what you're seeing, the 208 value is one and the 209 value is minus two, meaning a three degree spread between the two values. Ideally, the calculated spread is zero and the idle stabilization is also zero, but if you use your car, it won't be perfect. The ranges here can be displayed from minus eight to plus eight. So if you're anywhere near the extremes, it's time to consider a major timing chain service. The upper limit of spread is eight, where you must absolutely change your chains and you'll probably notice some funky sounds happening like rattling or clunking going on in the engine. At around three degrees spread is where you want to be monitoring and considering a major timing chain and guides service. Now you never just check values 208 and 209 alone and you must consider another two measuring groups which are 90 for the exhaust cam phaser and 91 for the intake cam phaser. These measure the VVT's range and can help indicate if your timing has started to go out. Main benefits for having this VVT is that adjustments can be made depending on the load you're putting on the engine and this gives you performance benefits by increasing power when required or improving economy or emissions when you're not giving it the beans. Again, you mainly focus on value number three. So on a Mark IV 3.2 or a TT Mark I 3.2, group 90's ideal value is zero degrees Group 91's ideal value is 22 degrees. An ideal duty cycle is around about 15 degrees. If either of the value number three's numbers head towards 11.25 degrees, this means timing is off roughly by a tooth and your timing should be inspected and corrected. This means your gearbox must come off, timing covers off, and then you're able to inspect the timing chain's timing. Another handy way to view these values all in one screen is to use the advanced measuring values option. Now we know we want to see measuring blocks 90, 91 and 208, 209. All of these can be chosen in the advanced measuring values option. So go ahead and choose. Now, for some reason in measuring blocks 208 and 209, they show up as blanks, but we know we want to see the third value. So place a check mark in that third value on the list. Now that you're able to see everything, this allows for a full assessment of what may be happening to your timing and timing chain components. We can see that my 90 and 91 values are pretty spot on. So timing is still good. 
and that the 208 and 209 values are something to monitor for the time being. But because the spread isn't over three degrees, so that means plus one, and we're seeing minus two, which equals a three degree spread. This is something I'm not worried about for the time being. I'll probably check this every six months or so. So why do we need to check our timing chain stretch from time to time? First, let's look at the various components of the VR6's engine timing, as there are a few parts to the system. This reference is from the Mark IV 2.8, which looks pretty much the same as a Mark IV 3.2 engine. So the main components that you can see here are the chain tensioners, the upper chain, the chain guides, and the lower chain. Now these components obviously wear out, which you can see in the photos comparing the used components versus new. The chains can also stretch. You can clearly see the used parts have grooves worn into the plastic guides where the worst case scenarios, these can break and cause engine damage. So it's best to fix the timing issues when you know these values are becoming a little bit off. So now let's check the values on a 3.6 Passat R36 engine while using Color MFA. Using the wiper stalk controls, we go into diagnostics and head to values 90 and 91 for the cam phases or VVT readings. Value three should be the set point value or the ideal value. So going off from the information that we see here, we don't want deviation of more than 0.5 degrees either way. So it's looking like there is a maximum degree of one degree out in my group 90 and 91 for the 3.6 VR6. Moving to group 208 and 209, we want the third value to be as close to zero degrees as possible. Remember, this is the value that's typically measured for timing change stretch. Group 208 looks like it's minus five degrees and then switching to 209 shows minus two. So the deviations are headed away from zero degrees, which isn't ideal. And also the spread is three degrees spread. So it looks like the 3.6 will require a timing chain service soon. I have no noise or rattles. So again, I'll be monitoring this a little bit more closely, but probably more frequently than the 3.2's engine. Now, one final tip when ordering chains and guides for your VR6 is to make sure you get the correct ones. As you can see, there are clear differences in the chain and guide setup between the two engines, especially when you're looking at the upper chain and left ascending guide setup. You can see that the MPI engines have the chain running over the guide, while the FSI engines have the upper chain running under the guide, and then it runs over the high pressure fuel pump drive. All right, everyone, so thanks for watching. I hope that's helped you learn how to check your VR6 timing chain stretch by using VCDS or Color MFA. If there's anything else that I've missed or any clarification you need, let me know in the comments below. And remember to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell to be updated on my Audi TT videos. Until next time, see you later.